we will now prove that integral is an additive function of the interval over which the function is integrated more precisely let f be a function from a b to r and c be a point in the open interval a b then f is riemann integrable if and only if its restriction to ac and cb are integrable and moreover in this case what you get is integral a to b f is equal to integral a to c f plus integral c to b f let's see a proof so let's just give some names so f restricted to ac let's call that f1 and this f1 will belong to r ac and f restricted to cb let's call it f2 and that belongs to r cb because f1 belongs to r ac we can say that for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists some delta 1 of epsilon which is also greater than 0 such that norm of p1 dot less than delta 1 of epsilon implies that modulus of modulus of s of f1 p dot p1 dot minus l1 for some number l1 is less than epsilon similarly for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists some delta 2 of epsilon greater than 0 such that norm of p2 dot less than delta 2 of epsilon implies that modulus of s of f2 p2 dot minus l2 is less than epsilon now we will prove that for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists some delta of epsilon which we have not yet defined greater than 0 such that modulus of p dot less than delta of epsilon implies that modulus of s of f p dot minus l1 plus l2 is less than epsilon we will prove the existence of such a delta of epsilon by considering two cases and dealing with each of these cases separately. So the first case is that C is a po partition point in P dot. Okay. If that is the case, then we know that P dot can be split into a partition P1 dot of AC and P2 dot of BC. And clearly you, you can see that S of F P dot is equal to S of F1 P1 dot plus S of F2 P2 dot. Notice that the norm of P1 dot and P2 dot are less than or equal to the norm of P dot. Because of this, if delta of epsilon is less than delta 1 and delta 2 of epsilon, then s f1 p1 dot is epsilon close to l1 and s f2 p2 dot is epsilon close to l2 because of this s f p dot is 2 epsilon close to l1 plus l2 as epsilon is arbitrary we get our result now the second case that is c is not a partition point in p dot this means that c belongs to some x k minus 1 to x k then let p1 dot be the partition i1 t1 i2 t2 etc up to i k minus 1 t k minus 1 comma x k minus 1 comma c comma c c 
similarly let p2 dot be the partition c x k comma c i k comma t k comma etc up to i n comma t n in short we have used the partition p dot of a b to construct partitions of a c and c b by adding two sub intervals and their tags now it's easy to see that s of f p dot minus s of f1 p1 dot minus s of f2 p2 dot is equal to f of tk into xk minus xk minus 1 minus f of c into xk minus xk minus 1 which is equal to f of tk minus f of c into xk minus xk minus 1. Okay. Now if you take the modulus of this, if you take modulus on both sides, then we get this. Notice that f restricted to AC is integrable, hence bounded. And similarly, f restricted to CB is integrable, hence bounded. So you take the maximum of these two bounds and that gives a bound for f on AB. Let this bound be m. Then if you use triangle inequality, f of mod of f of tk minus f of c is less than or equal to mod f of tk plus mod f of c. Which is, less than or, which is less than or equal to 2 times m, where m is the bound of f. And xk minus xk minus 1 is less than or equal to delta of epsilon. So we get 2m into delta of epsilon. Now this quantity is less than epsilon if delta of epsilon is less than or equal to epsilon by 2m. So combining all our observations so far, if delta of epsilon is equal to minimum of delta 1 of epsilon, delta 2 of epsilon and epsilon by 2m, then we see that modulus of S of fp dot minus L1 plus L2 is equal to modulus of s of f p dot minus s of f1 p1 dot minus s of f2 p2 dot plus s of f1 p1 dot plus s of f2 p2 dot minus l1 plus l2 which by triangle inequality is less than or equal to modulus of s of f p dot minus s of f1 p1 dot minus s of f2 p2 dot plus modulus of s of f1 p1 dot minus l1 plus modulus of s of f2 p2 dot minus l2 as delta of epsilon is less than epsilon by 2m this quantity is less than epsilon as ep uh, ep delta of epsilon is less than delta 1 it is this quantity is less than epsilon as delta of epsilon is less than delta 2 this quantity is less than epsilon so the sum of these three quantities is less than or equal to 3 epsilon. As epsilon is arbitrary, this proves that f is integrable and L1 plus L2 is the integral of f. And this completes the proof that if f is integrable on AC and CB, 
then f is integrable on ab and integral f on ab is equal to integral f from a to c plus integral f from c to b. Now we will show the other way implication. Okay, more precisely we will assume that f belongs to R A B and use this to show that f belongs to R A C and R C B. For every epsilon greater than 0, let eta of epsilon be as in Cauchy criterion that is if norm of p dot and norm of q dot is less than eta of epsilon then modulus of s of f p dot minus s of f q dot is less than epsilon. As before let f1 be equal to f restricted to ac okay and p1 dot and q1 dot be partitions of AC. Then we can extend by adding it such that norm of P1 dot and norm of Q1 dot is less than eta of epsilon. Now we can extend these partitions P1 dot and P2 dot to a partition of AB. Let's see how to do that. So C is somewhere in between and we have already got a partition of AC. So to get a partition of AB, we have to add more points in between C and B. In fact, we could have just taken an equal partition and, and added these exact same points to P1 dot and Q1 dot to form a partition P dot and Q dot of AB. Such that norm of P dot and norm of Q dot is less than eta of epsilon. Okay, and because we are taking the same points between in between CB for in P dot and Q dot, S of F P dot minus S of F Q dot will be equal to S of F1 P1 dot minus S of F1 Q1 dot. Okay, so if you take modulus, we know that this is less than epsilon by Cauchy criterion. So which implies that S of F1 P1 dot minus S of F1 Q1 dot is also less than epsilon. For any partitions P1 dot and P, uh, Q1 dot such that norm of P1 dot and Q1 dot is less than eta of epsilon. That is the Cauchy criterion is satisfied by F1, which implies that F1 is integrable. Similarly, we can show that F2 is also integrable and I leave that as an exercise. Because F1 and F2 are both integrable, the equality integral A to B F is equal to integral A to C F plus integral C to B F follows from the first part. Now we will use this theorem to show that if F from AB to R is monotone then F is Riemann integrable on AB. Okay now this gives us a large class of integrable functions and that is why this theorem is very important. So assume without loss of generality that F is increasing. Basically, if f was decreasing, we will have a very similar proof and doing that I leave as an ex exercise. So partition AB into n equal pieces. So more precisely, we have IK is equal to XK, XK minus 1 to XK and we have it such that XK minus XK minus 1 is equal to B minus A by N. And we define two functions alpha n and omega n as follows. So alpha n of x is equal to f of x k minus 1 if x belongs to i k. 
Similarly, omega n of x is equal to f of xk if x belongs to ik. So the function is increasing implies that alpha of x is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to omega n of x. Okay. So now what is integral a to b of alpha n of x? That is nothing but b minus a by n into f of x naught plus f of x1 plus etc up to f of x n minus 1. This follows by applying the additivity theorem to each of the sub intervals on which the function is constant. Integral a to b of omega n of x is equal to b minus a by n into f of x1 plus f of x2 plus etc up to f of xn. So integral a to b of omega n minus alpha n is nothing but the difference between these two which is equal to b minus a by n into f of xn minus f of x naught. But f of xn is nothing but f of b and f of x naught is nothing but f of a. So this is equal to b minus a by n into f of b minus f of a. Now because we have 1 by n, we have constant times 1 by n. So we can make this as small as we want. So by the squeeze lemma, we get that the function is integrable.